thank you so much for watching. My name is Fenna. I'm a full-time photographer here in the Netherlands, specialized in baby and newborn photography. I'd love to teach you a little bit more about photography. And I have some videos that might help you to take more beautiful photos of your surroundings and the people around you and the pets that you might have. So there are three main pillars in the world of photography which determine what your photo is going to look like and those are ISO, shutter speed and aperture and aperture is by far my favorite because it really adds another dimension to your photo. So as I explained before, shutter speed has a lot to do with movement, uh, freezing um, motion or uh, blurring a movement uh, but it also influences the amount of light coming into your photo iso is really related to the amount of light into your photo uh, but the higher your iso the more grain you can see in the darker areas of your photo um, and then the third one aperture is just the coolest <laughs> So aperture also influences the amount of light in your photo. So actually all three pillars do, but aperture does something else. So aperture is all about blurring the background or bringing everything sharp into focus. I myself love a blurry background. So you separate the subject, the thing you're focusing on from the background, which in this case gets a little bit more blurry. So yeah, that was really up and close, um, but it's kind of to show you what it does. It's actually a hole in the lens through which the light travels. Some people um, talk about your eye when they explain aperture because it's quite similar to your eye. Uh, you have an iris and it expands or shrinks um, with regards to the amount of light that comes in. So when you're outside, it's bright and sunny, it becomes really small. And when you're inside and it's quite dark, um, it becomes a lot bigger to catch more light. Yeah, the pupil of your eye is the hole that lets the light enter into your eye. So it's kind of like the pupil is your aperture. It's kind of what you can compare it to. The aperture is usually mentioned by a number with the letter F in front of it. So it's usually an F and then a slash and then a number. And people also call it an F stop. Now comes the confusing part. So the larger your f-stop, the smaller your aperture. The smaller your f-stop, the larger your aperture. This kind of messes with people their minds because usually when you say, okay, my, I have my aperture at 1.8, you would think, ooh, that's very low. But it's actually a very large and big aperture. When you have your aperture at f16, a high number, a big number, it's actually a really small aperture. I love a shallow depth of field. So when your subject is in focus and the background is blurry, I love it. I think it's really pretty because it really separates the thing you're focusing on from the rest behind or in front of it. And it really draws the attention to that point you're focusing on and you want people to look at that. So when I take a photo of a newborn, I focus on the eyelashes and I photograph with a big aperture. So a low F number. Uh, the lens that I have is a zoom lens. It's the 2470 lens, uh, which has an aperture of 2.8. That's the biggest aperture it can get. But throughout the entire, entire zoom length, the entire focal length can take a photo with an aperture of 2.8. Um, and I love it because then the rest gets blurry. I do photograph with 3.5 mostly because then I know I have a little bit more in focus. It's not just the eyelashes, but it's also the nose and the mouth. Maybe the legs, which are a little bit further away from the head, will be more uh, blurry and parents will love that. Um, but then a little bit more is in focus instead of just the eyelashes. But that's just a personal choice. Um, when I photograph a group of people, you actually have to be really careful that uh, the people who need to be in focus are actually in focus. So for example, if you photograph with f32, which not every lens can, um, then both your foreground and your background will be in focus. When you photograph with a 50 millimeter lens and an aperture of 1.8, a small part of your photo will be in focus and the rest will be blurry. Photographing with a big aperture, so a low F number, also means that you get a lot of light into your photo. 
Um, and sometimes you get too much light and then you can compensate it by using a faster shutter speed and a lower ISO. This also means that when you shoot with a very small aperture, so a large F number, for example, F16, you don't really get a lot of light in your photo. So you might have to compensate that by um, cramp cranking up your ISO or photographing with a slower shutter speed. Every lens has a limit as far as how large or small your aperture can be. I wouldn't really focus on um, the smallest aperture of your lens because most lenses go at least to f16 and when you're photographing a large group of people with i don't know two or three people standing behind each other you want to have everybody in focus f16 should do the trick um, what you might focus on if it interests you is the biggest aperture that a lens can handle because that's how much blurriness in your background you can create that's how much light you can get into your photo and that's what makes the lens uh, sometimes a little bit more expensive. So there are zoom lenses and there are fixed slash prime lenses. So with the zoom lens, you can zoom, zoom in and zoom out. Um, with a prime lens, uh, you cannot zoom. So when you wanna come up close, you actually have to walk forward. When you wanna zoom out, get more of the picture uh, in your frame, you might have to walk back um, so your legs have to do the zooming um, but yeah like a prime lens has an aperture so my 50 millimeter prime lens has an aperture like the biggest aperture it can take a photo with is 1.8 beautiful um, so that's just a given uh, I can also with the 50 millimeter lens take a photo with an aperture of 5.6 that's fine like you can change your aperture still but it doesn't get any bigger than 1.8. 1.8 is pretty big. Uh, there, are, there are lenses that have an aperture of 1.4. Amazing, a little bit more expensive. And then there are zoom lenses and you can have a zoom lens with a fixed largest aperture. So over the entire focal length, you can have the same large aperture. So with my lens, it's a 24 70 millimeter lens. So when I zoom out at 24 millimeters, I can have my aperture at 2.8. When I zoom in at 70 millimeters, I can still have my aperture at 2.8. That's what makes it an expensive lens. Um, but it's also great because I love this effect that it can create in a photo. So like in a wedding, I sometimes want to zoom in and sometimes want to zoom out, but I still want to have this creamy, uh, blurry background and I can with that lens. So that's great. You also have lenses, sometimes, for example, a kit lens that comes with a um, digital camera that has uh, an aperture of 4.0 little line. 5.6 then the biggest aperture you can take a fo photo with depends on the focal length you're taking the photo with so when you for example zoom completely out you can put your aperture at 4 f4 uh, but then when you start zooming in you can see that your aperture is becoming smaller and it actually goes to 5.6 that means that your aperture um, the biggest aperture you can take a photo with depends on how much you zoom in and how much you zoom out. What is important to you, how much money you want to invest, that's all up to you. I'm just giving you some information. So yeah, most of the time in the studio here during cake smash sessions, sitter sessions, newborn sessions, I have my aperture at 3.5. Just to be sure, I want to have the face in focus, the kids move around like the little ones. Um, so I can always take a photo with 2.8, but then there's a bigger chance that my photo might not turn out to be sharp. And with 3.5, there's a larger area that the camera can bring into focus. So then there's a bigger chance that I, for example, have the eyelashes in focus. So that's why I put my aperture usually at 3.5 when I'm just photographing one child. When I'm photographing brothers and sisters together and they're not all sitting completely aligned next to each other, I photograph with a smaller aperture because if one sibling leans forward a little bit and the other one leans backwards a little bit, I can focus on one person's eyes, but then the person who's sitting a little bit forward and a little bit backwards will not be sharp and in focus when I photograph at 3.5, which is why I can make a uh, photograph with a smaller aperture, put it at 5.6, because it kind of meshes everything that's exactly in the same line. Like 
my eyes are a certain distance from the camera and I focus on my eyes with an aperture of 1.8 then everything that's a little bit to the back or to the front will not be in focus everything that's exactly on the same line as my eyes will be in focus but um, with a larger group of people that's not going to happen so you have people sitting more to the front to the back when they're holding a baby the baby will be a little bit more to the front this also means that i'm losing a little bit of light so i photograph with a higher iso i keep my shutter speed the same usually 1 slash 200 um inside when i'm using flash outside can be a whole different story because there's sunlight uh there's clouds there's I can never tell you you should use these kind of camera settings because it all really depends on the light that you have in your photo. Okay, so here I have a camera. This is the full frame camera. It's my old one, the D610 uh, with a 50 millimeter lens. Uh, this is a really, really nice lens. You can take beautiful portrait photos with this lens. It's not very expensive. Uh, so I'm not gonna use flash today and I'm gonna take photos of this beautiful bouquet of flowers um, to show you what it looks like with different apertures um, I want to have all the photos with the same amount of light so I'm gonna put my camera not on a manual mode normally I photograph on the manual mode right now I'm gonna put it in like an aperture priority mode I control the aperture and then the camera automatically adjusts the shutter speed to create the same amount of light in the photo um, but you can see the difference in aperture but I'll show the settings per photo so I put my camera on the A mode so the aperture priority mode I think on Canon cameras it's something with an A as well <laughs> please forgive me if I'm wrong and then I control the um, aperture by moving this little part of the camera um, and the shutter speed will be automatically adjusted to the camera I'm gonna take a few photos to show you what the difference in aperture does with the photo I have my camera in the aperture priority mode because I, I want to determine uh, the aperture but I want the camera to adjust the shutter speed so that the light is the same in every photo but you just see the difference in the aperture um, I have my ISO right now at 800 because it looks really light and bright in here but otherwise when I crank up my aperture my shutter speed will be so low that when taking a photo out of my hand it will become blurry and we don't want that so I'll put my um, ISO at 800 first I'll start with my aperture of 1.8 okay now we go to an aperture of 2.5 Now we go to an aperture of 3.5. So every time I have a smaller aperture, so a larger F number, more of the rest of the flowers become in focus and not just the blue one I'm focusing on. So now my aperture is at F5. Another problem is that my shutter speed is becoming so low that when I take a photo out of my hand, I will get movement. So I should actually get a tripod. I don't have a tripod here so I'm gonna crank up my ISO just to give you the same idea of uh, having a smaller aperture I'm gonna put my ISO at 2000 let's go to an aperture of 7.1 let's go to the highest f16 I have to keep my camera super still you can hear the shutter speed is so low. Okay, my photo is getting so blurry. I'm just going to crank up my ISO again. Put my ISO at 6400. Yes. Okay, so you see a lot of the flowers are in focus. But because my ISO is so high, you also get a lot of grain. The larger the difference is between the thing you're focusing on and the background, the blurry, the more blurry your background gets. So if I, for example, pull out this beautiful blue model flower and I remove it from the rest of the flowers, like I take it more away from the other flowers so there's more distance between the point I'm focusing on and the background, you will see that the background becomes more blurry as well. So that's at 1.8. Let's do it again. 
at f16. Okay, so I hope this gives some kind of idea. <laughs> What I really like is shooting with a big aperture and creating distance between the focus point and the background. So you have this nice blurry background. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe and leave a comment. And then I'll see you hopefully in the comments and you see me in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.